Paul, first of all, I suppose we'll start with Teed News, shall we? We uh, went through the lengthy injury list before, but I mean, is anyone back this weekend that you're expecting? Yeah, so George has trained uh, today and tomorrow, so available, obviously. It was one, which international break was it? The Not the last one, the one before when he got injured when he was away with Greece. It's been a while and today was his first session, but it's good to have him in that place. So, yeah. Um, one or two getting closer, like Willisula, Max Lowe, but not available for us yet. McBurney, any chance? Not trained yet, no. no. Get a scan today on that injury that he picked up. Okay. Um, yeah, time and time again, I'm sure you've been asked about the, the situation in the table at the moment, but in terms of the group, we've just been hearing from Austin Trustees, we've been talking <coughs> about finding positives around the performances in particular. Has it been an easy job from your side to keep morale up among the players? Yeah, I think... Yeah, I wouldn't say it's an easy job, but yeah, I don't think there's any problem with that because there has been positives. I think we're also realistic in understanding where we are and, and what level we're at. You know, the expectation on us last season was slightly different, so we behaved in a different way. This season, whilst there are, there's still big expectations on us to perform and give our best, we understand that um, that may not be good enough. You know, so. I think keeping that perspective has been uh, really important for us as a group of staff and a group of players and just understanding that it's about us keep working and making sure that, I've said it a lot of times, that we, we're available to take advantage in as many games as possible. Is it as simple as one moment, potentially one goal, one win completely changes the situation of the it, season? Yeah, it is for the narrative and for, for different people. So the last couple of minutes against Spurs or... Jordan Pickford save with his head against Everton, you know. All of a sudden, we're out of the bottom three. People are saying different, and it's a, but I've, but that's without altering any sort of performance. Does that make sense? So, yeah, things haven't gone our way. Whether it's been the injuries, whether it's been moments on the pitch, but we have to make sure that we fight to, to turn that tide, and things do go our way. Um, because no one's gonna, I keep saying it again, that no one's gonna do that for us if people think that they'll sniff blood and they'll try and take advantage and get the three points. So. Yeah, it's um, yeah, could have been different. Uh, maybe should have been different, but it's not. What about the positives then? Well, what what are the things that you're seeing, perhaps on a daily basis on the training ground or in those games, that give you the belief that you will get that moment, that opportunity? Yeah, I think the evidence better. on the pitch, in terms of how close we've been so many times, um, the morale, the play, the willingness to to work and fight and compete. Because yeah, make no mistake about, it, we're down to uh, to the absolute bare bones in our squad. Um, so yes it's an opportunity but I don't want people just to think they're getting game time because they're the next in line you know I want them to seize that and turn the tide and make sure we start picking up points performances improve and then you stay in the team um, but certainly the mentality of the group when we're making changes opposed to other teams making changes for example from the bench yeah that probably opens up uh, and opens people's eyes to how stretched we are um, but the boys are sticking with it and, and they're competing. Some not playing the natural game, um, filling in. Um, but there's a willingness to do it because there's a willingness to try and get the points. How big a challenge does it pose then going to Arsenal, the team that ran Man City so close last year? Mm. I think it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest. I think anyone, my opinion, anyone finishing above them this season probably wins the league. Uh, so, yeah, it's as good as it gets for us. And, and again, in terms of the challenge, we have to relish it. I think that's, when you're on about the morale and things like that, I think that's easier, but I think uh, when, when you're playing, you can't always see these moments as opportunities, you know, but they are. That you've, you've got to enjoy going to the toughest place and putting in a performance. Cause these are the games that can kickstart people's careers and really establish them. So uh, someone's career, someone's rise to success, someone's... Uh, Whatever it is that gets them to the top level has to start somewhere, you know, and it's getting that that mindset, I think, into players. So, no, we shouldn't fear going there. We should accept how tough it's going to be and what level of performance we have to put in to, to get points. Um, and again, keeping that, that realistic head on it, that might not be enough, but so long as we can deliver that, then we'd be happy. Uh, just finally, before I hand on and away from football and specifically your side, I suppose, the, the wider issue of betting in football um, off the back of the Sandra Tonali mm. case and then Ivan Tony a few months ago. I mean, 
As someone in the game, what's your feeling on the issue of betting within football? Are you worried about how it's manifesting itself? No, I think I'm lucky because it's something I've never really been involved in, you know? So I'm probably less aware of it than others because it's not at the forefront of my mind. Does that make sense? I've never really been uh, in and around it and I, I'd consider that fortunate because um, if you do become an addict with anything, it, it's an illness, it's, it's a problem. So I've considered myself fortunate in that respect, but I also think I'm a little bit oblivious to it, you know? Um, whether there is an issue or not, I think individuals certainly have issues. So, yeah, I think that's why the rules are there to enforce, and you know, a no tolerance policy on any sort of betting in in your sport. And yeah, that's why they're there to make sure that we try and keep it as fair as possible. And also, with the education from players, because it does start when they're young, to try and help players not get themselves in those situations. Thanks, Paul. Hi, Paul. <coughs> Um, is Daniel Jebison anywhere no. near coming back at the minute? No. Okay. Have you had any clarity yet on whether you can add anyone to the squad yeah, or do anything no. about the injury crisis? We can't. No. Okay. Brian Brewster, with with Ollie McBurney out at the minute, is this potentially his time to shine now? Yeah, we hope so. He, listen, Rian's been working really well. I think you can see there's a hunger about him when he's been coming on from the bench. Um, yeah, but as always, I'm going to say the same thing. There's got to be a real degree of patience in terms of how long uh, Rian can play and, and deliver in this moment in time. We're still very aware of the journey he's been on how hard he's worked. But that's not to say that, and as you've seen in these, these last few games, that he can't deliver for us in the minutes that he's on the pitch. So, yeah, he's finishing great in training. He's looking sharp. He's certainly looking hungry. So, yeah, we, he's available for selection. We've been considering him now for the last couple of weeks and we've been really pleased with him. It's been one hell of a journey for him so far for a variety of reasons. Do you kind of feel now with everything he's gone through he might be in a, a better place as a player and a, and a person to try and fulfil that potential with which he had when he when he came here? Yeah, I think you forget about it. potentially it's where he is now and what he is now. Um, he's an older player and he's certainly grown up. So if, if anyone speaks with him and see him and, and probably re that. I think he's aware of a lot of things in how he's changed in terms of his personality and, and mentality towards um, himself and himself performing, trying to utilise different skill a skill set he's got, you know, which will maybe untap because he didn't need it before. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he's, certainly I've seen him change a hell of a lot in yeah probably coming up three years now that I've known him. Um, yeah, and I've. I enjoy him as a person. I can't wait. Like I said, I, I've got a lot of time for him, and yeah, it'd be special. I wish that effort against uh, United at the weekend would have just dipped in. It would have been a good moment for him. Is, is he potentially ready to play an hour, ninety minutes? If if yeah, it wouldn't stop? be. It wouldn't be nice. Listen, he'd go on a pitch for ninety, but we we bothered about. We'd just be speaking about the level and the level we've got to, uh, and we haven't been blessed that we've had our full squad and we can get maximum impact from all our subs um, because yeah you can see listen, Mason Mount I think was United's fourth sub but however many million he cost he was their fourth sub uh, we haven't had that and I'd take our fully fit squad against anyone in this league and we'll have a right goal at the minute we, we're compromising that because no matter what anyone on the pitch as well as we're playing or have played or you get to a point the physical exertions your levels do drop Statistically, you can see the running levels of players does drop in the last 20, 30 minutes. So we want that that bench to go on and have that massive impact. And I think that would certainly be with Rian. If, if I'm starting Rian, um, I certainly won't be wanting him to think he's got to last 90. I'd want the impact for as long as he can give it. And when he blows up, we can change it. I know you talked a bit about the formation change last weekend. Is that something that you've been able to work on a little bit more this week? Is that in terms of the rationale for it? I know you said you were thinking about doing that anyway, irrespective of the injuries. Yeah, in terms of a back four and getting uh, different personnel on the pitch, yeah, so it's given us an opportunity to work again on something different in front of the four. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's important that we do that. We Listen, one of the things we were very good at, and even at the start of the season, we were still getting our wing backs in positions where we want them, but we weren't getting the productivity from them or the combinations afterwards to create chances from it. So we're trying to. Uh, 
have different people in those positions. I'm confident we can get people in those areas of the pitch. And now it's just we've changed the personnel we want starting that. Uh, so yeah, we've worked on a bit more of that this week as well. So is the key to that about getting the ball forward a lot more, getting your attacking players on the ball a lot more? Is is that being? No, I think on? yeah, I think well, yeah, both, but not. So how we played, a lot of our width came from our wing backs, and they may we may have been building at the back, and they may have been our highest and widest players. Now we're trying to get that a little bit different. Could be on one side that the full back being our highest and widest players, but certainly not on both. So I think that's the that's the change. Um, yeah, behind that it does change other people's roles, but I think it suits a lot of our players. How do you assess the first quarter of the season overall, looking back? Yeah, tough. Listen, some things have been horrendous, like the injuries and things like that have been really tough. We've had tough moments on the pitch, but you have to deal with those. Um, yeah, so it's no different to what I expected. Um, as I said, I think if uh, those couple of games, three or four games, could have gone different in terms of scores and then points, and probably everyone would have said, "Yeah, you're probably about par or above where you'd want you'd, you'd think you could be." But I think we have to think beyond that, and it's about the new signings getting embedded in and performing as well as we can, not only for this season but for the for the future, um, and also the performances, because yeah, we want to be in a position where now and if and when we're getting some senior players back. They're adding to our group who are already playing well rather than coming in and we're praying for them to come back. So, yeah, I think it's um, whilst we're focusing in short term on results and picking up points, I don't think anything changes in the long term in terms of trying to bed players in and, and help players develop and compete at this level. And equally from that point, is it heartening that there's others around you in the league? You know, there's there's three or four teams that yeah. have, have also Listen, struggled league, to Yeah, I said points. it before, I, I think our league, yeah. You, probably goes up another five or six places that's our league table um, yeah but at the minute we're still bottom of that you know so yeah we we compete for different things to a, a Manchester United or an Arsenal we, we know we are and but we're still competing you know so yeah that's I think that's the uh, part of like I said before part of in that perspective and being really realistic of, uh, of where we are and what's important to us do you have to take Heart looking back at the the Man United performance, the Spurs performance, the Man City performance. When you go to Arsenal this weekend and and demonstrate to your players that you know this isn't you know an impossible task. Yeah, yeah, but I take a worse performance than all those and points. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I'd take a referee getting one wrong for us. I'd take a poor refereeing decision. I'd take a, a mistake from the opposition. I'd take all those things. Um, like I said, because in the short term we're fighting for the points. It won't change our approach in it and how we're looking back at the games and how we want to improve and what certain players need to do. Um, but I'd take any of those things to get the points. What are Arsenal's strengths as opposed to some of those other bigger, so-called bigger teams that you've already played this season? Where do you see as their real strengths? <sighs> With and without the ball, I think they're very good. Really good. Um, and, I, and I say it all the time, I think when teams are going through times of winning or, or not, whatever level they're at, I think the only thing that tends to differentiate is how is your job you do without the ball. Players' quality on the ball remains the same. Maybe the intensity, the desire to win the ball back, the desire to run uh, does drop off if a, if a top team just drops the standards a little bit. But I see them as a hungry team who compete really well without the ball as well. So, yeah, I think I, I do. I think they're a good side. And it's what they say it's a game we're looking forward to. Um, a game that, yeah, we should relish how much of a challenge it's going to be because you can see how they fight back as well. You know, they the go to the death. So regardless how well we play, we're going to have to earn everything. Big day for Austin Trusty as well. We've been hearing from him today. He's, he's got himself into the team, both you know by himself and as well as, as injuries contributing. What have you made to him over the last couple of games? Doing well. I think he's shown what, what we said about him when we signed him. I think... He's certainly he's got the athleticism to to play at this level, um, and he's got a desire and a mentality to improve as well. So in terms of like instructions or a tactical element, he tries to deliver it on the pitch and, and be a good teammate as well as a you know good player for him, for himself. Um, we like that about him, and he's also got a, a work ethic to try and improve as well, and wants to do 
Um, the hours, the minutes, the extra sessions when he wasn't starting, he was doing all the extras um, to get himself in a position to be ready to take his chance. Just finally, as a bit of a, an aside, Paddy Kenny's taking his first steps into management at ninth tier goal at okay. the minute. What would be your advice to Paddy as he takes his first steps into management? Get some good assistance. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, listen, I I think it's you heard me say a lot. I enjoy the coaching part of it, and always I can't imagine myself doing anything else than working with players. Um, but it's different when you're the one picking it, and it stops with you. And it, yeah, it'd be good. He'll, he'll enjoy it or he'll hate it. It'd be one or the other. Brilliant. Cheers, Paul. Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. Just talk actually on that point about coaching, and you know, you just love being out there with the players, coaching. That's what it's about. So, as a coach, this situation is very different to the one you had last year. You throw in the Premier League challenge, no one said it would be easy. You throw in all the injuries you've had to contend with, blah de blah de blah yeah. So how is this challenging you as a coach right now? I think it's, it's in a different way. I think it's more the leadership now. I, I, well, last season, we, I think how we performed on the pitch papered over other issues and we didn't speak about certain things because the laser focus of the group was fantastic, but there were lots of things which were a problem. Um, but it didn't stop us, so there's one. I think our, our problems now where we find ourselves are on the pitch, whether that's injuries, which we've had before as well and we've managed to get through. Um, and I think the biggest thing is, like I said, the leadership and, and the... Cons I know these players can make a dent at this level. Like they've been so close in so many games and I know some players can stay at this level, whether that's with us, whether that's with someone else, and we have to show that. Does that make it? We have to show that. And I'd, and I'd compare that to the last time um, I was in the Premier League when I took over a little bit. And I think how we, we try and focus on the environment and the mood a lot. Because, as I said, sometimes if, if you're getting beat or things aren't going your way and results aren't, and you start listening to everything that's said, you can lose track of really what is important. What is important is us preparing properly and us giving our best and putting ourselves in a position as often as possible to capitalise, one, if a team has an off day, one, if we get the opportunity to score and see a game out and be as positive as that. So, yeah, um, one, it's part of the job. What, what, Whatever challenges are most prevalent at the minute or most important, you have to sort out and then solve, you know. Um, ours, I think this time, are pretty straightforward. You know, we haven't been good enough on the pitch. Uh, the injuries, whatever it is, but... We can soak about it, but it's not going to make the players come back. So, ours are on the pitch, so our focus has to be, again, on the mood, on the environment, and us delivering every day as best as we can on the training pitch and then on the pitch on a Saturday. It's one of these glass half full or empty situations, isn't it? You could see Arsenal, who Sheffield United haven't beaten down there in 50-odd years. They've not lost to anybody in the Premier League. You could see that as, how do we go about this? Glass half full, you could say, what a great opportunity. Yeah, they're, they're all opportunities. Listen, it, it, it's tough, but you've got to enjoy how tough that's going to be. Um, pretty sure how, how Mikel had set the team up, but he could put any number of personnel in certain positions. He's got that luxury. Um, he's changes from the bench, again, and, he's, and the mentality they've got to fight and scrap for the points. So, yeah, we, we're taking on a team at the very top. The very top. So let's see. You know, let's see where we're at. And you could throw a blanket, a pretty big blanket, but a blanket nonetheless over half a dozen teams at the bottom. Yeah. We're, a long way to go. A lot can change in a couple of results, can't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Simply because there's a lot of teams finding this league hard and how hard it is to get a result. Um, yeah, so I, I think, yeah, that, that, that's been proven, not just with us in our situation, but the other clubs as well. Um as I said, wherever it is, and that's why we'll focus on how we play and trying to perform as well as we can to give us the best possible chance. But if it has to be a bit of luck, something to go our way this time, referee decision, to say a mistake, we'll take it because that can get you up and running off a mark.